Are you struggling to keep your production floor up to date with the current release of engineering drawings and revision levels? Or your CNC machines with the proper release of the digital models? Let's take a look at how you can connect SolidWorks to DelmiaWorks and keep the shop data in sync with the front office. A vast number of the companies we at Javelin interact with are not leveraging the data that they've created in SolidWorks for downstream use. Think of it, all the time, effort, and expertise to create these very detailed 3D CAD models along with the derived bills of materials, specification sheets, and in some instances, manufacturing process sheets and build instructions, and even the 3D models for downloading into CNC machines. It's all just sitting there in an engineering silo. When it comes to 3D design, SOLIDWORKS has been the tool of choice for many years. With the SOLIDWORKS add-in, users can link part and assembly information to the DelmiaWorks inventory, bills of manufacturing, project management, and preventative maintenance modules for increased productivity and throughput. Companies invest heavily in creating CAD designs of their products. From the commitment and hardware for workstations, to the CAD software used to model the items that they create, the training of the design staff and the numerous hours of labor spent engineering the parts and assemblies, the investment is considerable. The assembly models, individual part models, and the derived drawings and bombs required to produce products represents the intellectual property or IP that a company has generated. We call this the digital thread. Assembly to part models to drawings and to bombs. Let's not forget about the connection to documentation, spare parts lists, manufacturing process sheets and instructions, as well as customer-facing documentation. Change something in a part model or assembly model and the ripple effects through the ancillary documents are incredible. The sheer number of touch points that a company needs to ensure are properly adjusted from just one change can be enormous. It seems this intellectual property ownership tends to stop once it leaves engineering. Just getting a bomb into an ERP can be a struggle, not to mention engineering changes and the component part updates. Let's take a look at the ease with which a user can slip between SOLIDWORKS CAD world and the ERP space. Here we see a typical SOLIDWORKS display screen. We notice that we have our various options along the right hand side. And for those with PDM, you'll notice that there's the uh, PDM Blueberry that we can grab. And once you get DelmiaWorks, if you have the SOLIDWORKS add-in, we get this added control process here. And what that allows us then to do is to take a look from a ERP uh, viewpoint, take a look at the various items. In this case, we have an assembly with our typical design tree. And the interesting thing here is now I can start to take a look at what's going to be involved in bringing this information into the system. So I can go ahead and open this up and I'm in the add new documents to my ERP system. And you'll note the parent child hierarchy. So I've got my top level assembly and all my sub components. And what that does then is break down the actual SOLIDWORKS model um, based on what we have highlighted in the left pane. And you can see here that at this point, it's not a controlled document. We have the path where it's coming from. And the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're going to key these particular SOLIDWORKS models into an inventory item. Uh, in other words, something that would be in our item master from the uh, ERP inventory. Because when we bring these things over into a bill of manufacture, the um, ideal situation is we need to define what is the item number in the inventory system. So the first option we have here is to be able to go ahead and search through here and select. We can start to type something if we already know what it is. Uh, so if it's an existing part, this is great. However, a lot of times what we've seen in various other interfaces to SOLIDWORKS and some other ERP system, whether they're homegrown or, or purchased, the issue then becomes what happens if I do not have an item number within my ERP system that represents this in the inventory system? Do I have to stop and send a list down to the purchasing department and they're going to go ahead and create some inventory items with some blank information in it? And then they're going to send me what those item numbers are back up to engineering and I'm going to go ahead and then select those and then start uploading these details uh, and actually attaching you know, whatever the applicable item is, the model or the drawing, uh, bill of manufacture, spec sheets, assembly sheets, all of that. And it becomes a multi-stage process 
uh, between multiple people. What we have here is the ability to create a new input and that new input number then allows us to go ahead and then detail what these particular items are. So you can see here it's going to give it this SOLIDWORKS number. I could retype that into anything I wish and see that it's going to follow along with whatever the revision number is coming out of SOLIDWORKS, which means if you either have SOLIDWORKS revisioning your uh, parts for you or if you've got them as part of either uh, the SOLIDWORKS PDM product data management system or our SOLIDWORKS managed system, uh, then if that's taking care of the revision numbers, those will automatically be updated to the latest and greatest as they've been released uh, through that engineering process. And then once I've selected that number and I click OK, you'll note that it's filled it in with whatever I put there. So we have the ability to do the same thing. If it's an engineering change, we can attach it to an engineering change system, which we have in Delmeaworks as part of the quality module. Uh, we have the ability to actually connect and uh, make that as part of an ECO uh, process. And then if it's maintenance, repair, and overhaul, again, if it's something, say, for some of the machinery, the tooling, the dies, whatever it might be on the floor, we can tie it to an MRO number. Uh, which again links the um, the engineering side of things to the production floor. So if there's a maintenance order out there, then we'll make sure that all the appropriate files are attached to it. If we've got assemblies or processes that we want to attach it to, or if it's part of a project. So there's often times in a company that there'll be numerous projects that you're running, um, you know, machine updates, mach um, process changes. Uh, maybe you're changing something in a uh, production line and you need some tooling to go along with it and it's part of a project. Again, you can attach them right from here. What that does is it gives you one-stop shopping. You're doing everything in engineering, you're taking this information and you're pushing it into the ERP system and that's as simple as clicking the submit button. And once you click that submit button, it's going to go ahead and process all that information and it's now being pushed over into our ERP system. And it's as simple as that. And now if we wish to jump into the Delmia work system, you know, we can very easily jump in here. We'll dive into our bill of materials. So here we go. And we know the item number. So I'm just going to type that in. And that'll draw that up very fast. So there is my top level assembly. And what that then does is brings our top level up. So there is our device. So you can see all the details just as we added it. And some people will say, well, what's the big deal? We've got some text in there. Well, the biggest piece of this thing is the fact that we have an entire indented parent-child relationship bill of material with all the devices. And because we used it as a template, when we grabbed that from uh, SolidWorks and brought it into Delmeaworks, it took the template and it added packaging material. So the nice thing about this is you can create several different kinds of templates depending on the styles and types of products you're creating and loading into Delmeaworks. And there we have it. We start getting the entire bill of material set aside. What happens from this point on then is the person, whoever's doing the job of, say, a manufacturing engineer, would enter the process equipment that's required. So whether you need additional conveyors uh, and various things, you would go ahead and select Add On. You would pick your list of items and put your equipment numbers in here. Um, decide which location it's going to be. So you would just carry through with all of your process information that you needed to move that information through the job floor. Whether it needs to go to a milling system, uh, CNC, whether it's going to a specific cell, uh, you would go and select all of that so it could process through the shop floor. That could be templated as well. So we have quite a few options now for us to go ahead and carry on getting this information into the system. But the key piece is to get this bill of material in, get that indented bomb, make sure that we've brought all the details in that we require. Uh, and now it's up to the ERP system to process it through the manufacturing side, bring in any procured materials, uh, either rough stock um, to be cut and machined, or third-party purchased items. Like you'll see in here, there's some hardware, there's some nuts and flanges and things like that uh, that need to be brought in. And there you go, you're off and running. As we have touched on today, the Delmia Works SolidWorks interface can really save valuable time, not only entering a new bomb, but it also saves time when future engineering changes, updates, and component changes are required. Being able to bring in celery documents such as work instructions and quality documents are an added bonus to keep the shop floor humming with production activity, not busy work trying to find the correct information. 
And this interface to SOLIDWORKS is even enhanced by the DelmiaWorks engineering change functionality in our quality module, offering a closed loop engineering change process that incorporates the production floor with procurement and engineering. Now that's powerful stuff. Please contact your Javelin sales representative if you have any questions or would like to explore Delmeal Works in further detail.